mechanical ice uh, possibility. Quantum mechanics allows. Brain is capable of millions in their own net. Emotional response. The brain does not know the difference between what it sees in its environment and what it remembers. We are running the whole day. Whatever way we observe the world around us. So how can you continue to see the world as real if the self that is determining it to be real is intangible? existing simultaneously. Is there a possibility that all potentials exist side by side? Have you ever seen yourself through the eyes of someone else that you have become? And look at yourself through the eyes of the ultimate observer. Who are we? Where do we come from? What should we do? And where are we going? Why are we here? Well, that is the ultimate question, isn't it? What is reality? What I thought was unreal now, for me, seems in some ways to be more real than what I think to be real, which seems now more to be unreal. You can't explain it. Uh, and anybody who gets too lost and try, anybody who try, spends too much time trying to explain it is likely to get lost forever down the rabbit hole of mysteriousness. I think the more you look at quantum physics, the more mysterious and wondrous it becomes. Quantum physics in very succinctly speaking, is a physics of possibility. These are questions. These are addressing questions um, um, of how the world feels to us, of, of whether there's a difference between the way the world feels to us and the way it really is. Have you ever thought about what thoughts are made of? I think some of the things we're seeing with the children today is a sign that the culture is in the wrong paradigm and not appreciating the power of thought. Every age, every generation has its built-in assumptions that the world is flat, that the world is round, etc. There are hundreds of hidden assumptions, things, things we take for granted that may or may not be true. Of course, in the vast majority of cases, historically, these things aren't true. So presumably, if history is any guide, much about what we take for granted about the world simply isn't true. But we're locked into these precepts without even knowing it, oftentimes. That's a paradox. Modern materialism strips people of the need to feel responsible. And often enough, so does religion. But I think if you take quantum mechanics seriously enough, it puts the responsibility squarely in your lap. And it doesn't give answers that are clear-cut and comforting. It says, yes, the world is a very big place. It's very mysterious. Mechanism is not the answer, but I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. Because you're old enough to decide for yourself. 
Is everyone a mystery? Is everyone an enigma? They most certainly are. Asking yourself these deeper questions opens up new ways of being in the world. It brings in a breath of fresh air. It makes life more joyful. The real trick to life is not to be in the know, but be in the mystery. Why do we keep recreating the same reality? Why do we keep having the same relationships? Why do we keep getting the same jobs over and over again? In this infinite sea of potentials that exist around us, how come we keep recreating the same realities? Isn't it amazing that we have options and potentials that exist, but we're unaware of them? Is it possible that we're so conditioned to our daily lives, so conditioned to the way we create our lives, that we buy the idea that we have no control at all? We've been conditioned to believe that the external world is more real than the internal world. This new model of science is just the opposite. It says what's happening within us will create what's happening outside of us. There's a physical reality that is absolutely rock solid and yet it only, if you want to put it this way, it only comes into existence when it bumps up against some other piece of physical reality. That other piece may be us, and of course we're partial to those moments, but it doesn't have to be either. It, you know, it could be just some incidental uh, rock comes flying along and interacts with this fuzzy mass of stuff and sure enough it provokes it into a particular state of existence and there were philosophers in the past that said look if I if I kick a rock and I and I hurt my toe that's real you know I feel that it, it feels real it's vivid and uh, that re that means that it's reality uh, but it's still an experience and it's still this person's perception of it being real scientific experiments have shown that if we take a person and uh, uh, hook their brains up to certain PET scans or computer technology and ask them to look at a certain object and they watch certain areas of the brain light up and then they've asked them to close their eyes and now imagine that same object and when they imagine that same object it produced the same areas of the brain to light up as if they were actually visually looking at it so it caused scientists to back up and ask this question so who sees then? Does the brain see? Or do the eyes see? And what is reality? Is reality what we're seeing with our brain? Or is reality what we're seeing with our eyes? And the truth is, is that the brain does not know the difference between what it sees in its environment and what it remembers, because the same specific neural nets are then firing. So then it asks the question, what is reality? We're bombarded by huge amounts of information. And it's coming into our body and we're processing it, coming in through our sense organs. And it's percolating up and up. And at each step, we're eliminating information. And finally, what is bone?